Yamagata University in Japan has carried out a deep learning project to identify new geoglyphs that make up the famous, mysterious and protected Nazca lines in Peru. These finds were then verified by on-site archaeological surveys. It's an exciting development because technologies such as LiDAR, Big Data and AI are becoming increasingly useful for identifying new archaeological sites and helping researchers pinpoint where digs should be carried out. Today, let's take a look at those impressive and ancient Nazca lines. Before I discuss the latest geoglyphs to be found by Yamagata University, I'm going to give you an introduction to the Nazca lines and why these ancient phenomena are seen as rather mysterious. Essentially, the Nazca Lines are enormous geoglyphs that have been incised into the Nazca Desert in southern Peru and are now designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. To give you an idea of what they look like, here's one known as the pelican. They were mostly created by removing about 10 to 15 centimetres, so 4 to 6 inches, of iron oxide coated pebbles from the surface of the desert, revealing a yellow grey subsoil underneath, which then makes up the outline of the geoglyph. Covering around 450 square kilometres, that's around 170 square miles, they take a variety of different shapes, including lineal, figurative, and geometric. The glyphs have been attributed to the Nazca culture who inhabited the area between 100 BCE and 800 CE, a time period which has been further divided into the Proto-Nazca, the Early Nazca, the Middle Nazca and the Late Nazca, as well as constructing the geoglyphs which must have required a tremendous amount of social organisation, the Nazca culture also built underground aqueducts known as Puqua, which were used for both irrigation and domestic water supplies, and a non-urban ceremonial site, Kahuachi, which consisted of earthwork mounds and plazas. The Nazca people also produced a lot of very distinctive textiles and ceramics. In recent years, geoglyphs have been discovered in the Palpa province as well, and these are thought to have been created by the Paracas culture as much as 1,000 years earlier than the Nazca lines. This one is known as the Candelabra. These geoglyphs are mostly found on the slopes of hills rather than on the desert valley floor as at Nazca. It's thought Nazca society evolved from this earlier Paracas culture who produced complex textiles and embroideries as works of art and also had sophisticated water management systems. Some of the Nazca geoglyphs are as long as 370 meters, so 1,200 feet. Due to their vast size, they are more easily seen from the air than from the ground, although there is good visibility from the surrounding hills. The figurative geoglyphs include representations of animals, humans, plants and tools. Experts have categorised these into line type and relief type. The line type glyphs were created by removing black stones in a linear pattern, revealing the white sand underneath whereas relief type glyphs combined both black stones and white sand and have been further characterized into four subtypes. In these images, A is a line type glyph, whereas B, C and D are relief types. Here are a few more examples of figurative geoglyphs which have been identified as a monkey, a spider, a hummingbird and a flower. Scholars think that the line type geoglyphs were created during the early Nazca period because they bear a resemblance to the iconography on pottery belonging to that time. However, they have suggested an earlier date for the relief type glyphs, putting them somewhere between 400 and 200 BCE because they are similar in appearance to contemporary petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are decorations and figures etched into rock faces. So it's possible that the creators of the petroglyphs decided to make much larger scale versions of them on the desert floor. I think it's rather interesting that the relief type glyphs are older than the line type ones, considering that they would have been more complicated to make. What I also find interesting is that the Nazca culture built such huge mounds. The Americas were a hive of activity in ancient times when it came to earthworks and stone monuments, which shows that all the cultures who embarked on such construction projects had sophisticated ritual needs. 
I wonder if whatever took place at the Nazca Cultures Ritual Center at Cahuachi had any relationship with the geoglyphs. It's also worth mentioning at this point that enormous geoglyphs have also been found in the Amazon. These are earthworks similar to henges, but they take on a variety of forms and shapes. And aside from the loose idea that they probably had a ceremonial role, no one is quite sure what they were used for. But my point is that whether we are talking about geoglyphs, earthwork mounds or stone monuments, enormous resources and organisation would have been needed, so their importance must have outweighed the effort invested in them. I found an aerial video of the Nazca Lines, which is available under a Creative Commons licence, so I'm going to run that here while I continue talking. So that brings me to all the different hypotheses regarding the Nazca Lines function. Obviously, it's not known with any certainty what they were created for, but archaeologists think they probably played a religious role, perhaps associated with ceremonial pathways. Pottery sherds, maize and spondylus mollusks have been found on many geoglyphs, which supports the idea that some sort of ritual activity or celebration was taking place at them. Due to their huge size, they can mostly only be appreciated from the air, which has led to some wild hypotheses. In the 1970s, Erich von Daniken, he of ancient astronaut fame, popularised the idea that they were landing strips for alien craft. It's also been suggested that they were purposefully designed to be seen by our alien overlords. Aliens wouldn't be my first guess personally. A number of researchers have suggested that the Nazca lines played an astronomical role, perhaps being used as an observatory or to track certain alignments. Others have put forward the idea that the geoglyphs represent constellations. However, not enough evidence has been found to support any of these astronomical hypotheses. Yamagata University has been mapping geoglyphs covering the Nazca Pampa since 2004, using satellite imagery, aerial and drone photography and LIDAR. However, manually searching for geoglyphs on high-resolution aerial photography covering such a large area takes an enormous amount of time. For example, it took five years to analyse satellite data. So to speed things up, the team introduced deep learning for object detection. Archaeologists use deep learning for analysing the iconography and text on artefacts and for image classification in data received via LIDAR and aerial photography. Yamagata University faced certain challenges when applying deep learning to the Nazca geoglyphs. Firstly, there's only a small amount of training data available, and secondly, the geoglyph designs are quite diverse. In 2018, the university conducted a proof of concept study using the object detection algorithm known as the single shot multibox detector. The aim of the project was to identify new geoglyphs from aerial photographs. The images were taken over the Ingenio Valley in the northwestern sector of the Nazca Pampa. After a successful test phase using training data, the system identified four new geoglyphs which were subsequently confirmed by on-site surveys. The results of this project have now been published in a paper, which I'll put the details of in the description below. These geoglyphs were a relief-type humanoid holding a club in its right hand and measuring five meters in length, a line-type pair of legs measuring 78 meters in length, a relief-type fish with an open mouth measuring 19 meters in length, and a line-type bird measuring 70 meters in length. The project concluded that deep learning is an excellent tool for researchers since visual inspection is not always reliable. Although the hummingbird geoglyph is famous and a lot of attention has been paid to it, the humanoid geoglyph close by had never been detected until machine learning was applied. Deep learning also speeds up the process by which geoglyphs can be identified, recorded and protected before destruction, which there is unfortunately a risk of. However, one drawback was the detection of geometric and straight line geoglyphs. The system overdetected such patterns and wasn't able to differentiate between these types of glyphs, modern roads and ruts. So at this point, it can only be applied to the figurative geoglyphs. What do you think about the Nazca geoglyphs, including these fascinating new ones. Personally, I'm almost more interested in the straight line glyphs than the figurative ones. The figurative ones could easily have had a ceremonial role in my opinion, especially since they take the form of flora and fauna found in the natural environment. Most ancient cultures had a strong relationship with their surroundings. However, the straight lines are quite strange. I just can't quite figure out what they would have been for. Maybe they were causeways or something like that. Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. 
I just want to say a big thank you to my patrons and channel members for all of your support. I really do appreciate it and I'll catch up with you next time.